very warm welcome to our short service in our series of Lent for Weary Pilgrims. We've been journeying through Lent, preparing ourselves for Good Friday and Easter to be ready for all that Christ has won for us through his cross and resurrection. We also consider the parallels with practices of medieval pilgrims on their way to meet with God here at the shrine of St. David. They often had experienced long hardships on their journeys just as we come this year with the exhaustion of two years of COVID, we, like they, need opportunity to recover and find refreshment before moving onward. So we are looking at how medieval pilgrims pause just before they reach St. David's. They recognize their need to recuperate and prepare for their destination. And as we use Lent in a way for our preparation for Holy Week and Easter, they would rest, recovering from the long, tiring experience. They would reflect on their outer and their inner journey. And they would wash themselves and their clothes and generally ready themselves to enter the close and the cathedral environs. Finally, prepared to receive all God might have for them, they would walk the last few miles, stand here on holy ground, conscious of God's presence here then it would be for them to respond to whatever God's call for the future would bring as they picked up the reins of normal, normal or perhaps new normal life again. And so we begin by praying the collect for Lent. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. So the passage uh, that's been chosen for today is Matthew chapter 16, uh, verses 13 to 20. Peter's declaration about Jesus. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. And so here we are at the end of our series for tired pilgrims. As we approach Palm Sunday and Holy Week, we prepare to enter the city and receive all the gifts of God's grace given freely for us that we might live and not just live but to have life in abundance and in all its fullness. It's a lovely picture of God's generosity for us, a full measure pressed, shaken down and running over. We have a good idea that pilgrims once they arrived here, whether they had walked or come by sea, were not in particularly good shape. The journey had taken its toll and they were broken and many needed some sort of respite or medical care before they came to receive here at the cathedral. So purely from the effort that had been made to get here, expectation was high and what they were going to get for their earthly suffering was incomparable with the spiritual gains of a place secured in heaven and a promise of release to glory from the mud and mire of our earthly existence. 
If only we had the same desire in our lives and in our hearts today to know Christ and him crucified. We have so many numerous troubles, the cost of living, energy prices, the fear of nuclear war, and the sights of the war in Ukraine in such familiar European landscape with people and places that we can identify with, it's truly horrifying. And yet whilst we ask where God is in all of this, we see the Ukrainian people filling basements, receiving communion, praying. Where is God? Well, God is there. God is in the midst of the chaos of battle. God is in the suffering. God is in the sadness. He's not inflicting pain, nor is he an avenging angel, but he weeps with the bereaved and the orphan, and he hangs his head at the inhumanity of humanity. But for that to be a strength for us, we need to know who God is. Who is this Jesus? In our text for today, first of all, Jesus asks who people say that he is. This avoids immediately challenging the disciples, but nonetheless gets them thinking about this question. And you can imagine them animatedly relaying all the gossip that they had heard. Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And apart from the gossip, some of the more influential in society, including Herod Antipas, were also asking the same question, who is this man? And the intelligentsia of the day thought that Jesus was John the Baptist, risen from the dead. Others said that he was Elijah because he was expected to return just before the coming of the Christ or Messiah. Others might have said Jeremiah because of Jesus' character and his warnings about the judgment that God would send. Those who spoke of, spoke of Jesus as a prophet or a, a, a spokesman of God had been playing this safe because this was a kind of general term. However, some Jews did expect more prophets to come before the Messiah came. Jesus then, just as the disciples are animatedly talking about other people and what other people think, he makes the question personal to the disciples. He, he drives directly to them and to their home. But what about you, he asks. Who do you say that I am? This enormous question, huge in its implications, the answer to which will determine the eternal destiny of everyone and the quality of life of those who are living now and in the future. And it's safe to say that the disciples must have talked about this question many times. They must have asked each other who he was. But as usual, Peter speaks for the disciples, although his words would have no doubt surprised some of the other disciples. He probably even surprised himself that he came out with it. Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And this momentous event, for the first time, someone publicly declares that Jesus is the Christ or the Messiah. So as we head into Holy Week, let's be open to all that God has to give us. Jesus turns to us again and he asks that piercing question to us. What about you? Who do you say that I am? going to listen to some verses now of Psalm 31.
And so we pray for ourselves. We pray for all who are journeying through Lent this year. We reflect particularly on the question of Jesus. Who do you say that I am? 
Lord Jesus Christ, lead us on our Lenten pilgrimage through and beyond this time. Burdened and heavy laden by all that we've been through, let us now come to you for rest. And as we reflect on what we have experienced, we may learn all you are teaching us. Prepare us for a new chapter of life ahead, so that as your Easter people, we may be ready to receive freely all that you desire to give us and to share freely with those to whom you send us. And so we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We now listen to some verses from the ancient hymn, Sing My Tongue, A Glorious Battle. What about you? Who do you say that I am? May God the Father, who does not despise the broken spirit, give to you a contrite heart. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, set you free to die to sin and to live to righteousness. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you today and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>